Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. During my time in Kerbal Space Program, I have made many, many space planes. Some of them I have custom designed in Blender and brought into the game, including the Orion Carrier plane that I'm using in my To Mars and Beyond series to launch all the payloads. Parallel to the To Mars and Beyond series, I have decided to have a live stream series on Twitch where I only use the space shuttle because after all, all these space planes are sort of in response to the space shuttle, right? The most famous of all space planes. And during the course of that series, I realized that since it's set after the Columbia disaster, we don't have many shuttles available. We have Atlantis, Discovery, and Endeavor, and a certain mishap happened to Discovery very early on in that series on Twitch. I don't know if that series is gonna be made for YouTube so far, so let's set that aside for now. So so far it's just on Twitch. Uh, so we only have Atlantis and Endeavor right now, and I decided that I would need some additional shuttles. But then if we are going to sort of commission a new shuttle in say 2005 or 2006, uh, what would that shuttle be like? I decided that uh, being realistic about it, it would probably only be a marginal improvement. Let's say they were planning to just continue the shuttle program and make some improvements and make sure that it was safer and all that business. Um, what could they do with it? I think really the marginal improvement would be just making certain things lighter. Uh, in particular, the cockpit, the electronics in the cockpit could be lighter. Uh, it could be much more simplified instead of all those flick switches. Yeah, a lot of it could be automated today. And a lot of the wiring could be simplified. The shuttle had like 10 tons of wiring going across the entire thing. And so some of that could be cut down. And then the back end could be redesigned with CAD software because originally they didn't have that. And it's sort of a jumble back there. And that made it hard to get through everything to maintain the shuttle. And that increased the maintenance time for the shuttle. So simplifying the engine mount and making that lighter uh, the internals of that lighter could be done and then also making the engine slider similar to the way that SpaceX has done between Raptor 1 and Raptor 2 uh, the SSMEs themselves we don't want to increase the thrust we don't want to make it more efficient really uh, the increased thrust won't get you too much out of it anyway because there's stress and it has to thrall down anyway so yeah, we don't want it to have more thrust we want it to have more thrust to weight ratio and what that means is less mass. So instead of making more efficient by having more thrust or more specific impulse, we're making more efficient by having less mass. So those are the main changes that I was looking at. And so I hypothesized that we could take about 5.5 uh, tons out of the shuttle altogether. And uh, 1.5 tons of that would be in the three engines. So I've I got a RS25R that is just three tons. The D slash E is uh, 0.5 tons more than that. And so everything else stays the same. The thrust weight ratio is still pretty weak. I mean, we're talking about a 78 thrust weight ratio at best. And that's nothing compared to Raptor. Raptor has the same stage combustion thing. Well, it has full flow stage combustion, but its mass is much lighter and it gets about the same amount of thrust. So that gives you an idea that, you know, we're still not optimized to a uh, severe extent or anything like that. This is quite reasonable and it could be pushed further if we wanted to. But uh, one thing that we need to test here is the balance. So I didn't want to do anything too egregious. I mean, of course, if we can make it lighter, that'd be great, but it is hydrolox instead of uh, methylox. So it's more complicated. It needs a whole bunch of extra stuff because of the density of hydrogen and its properties. But anyway, we're taking some out of the engine mount here. As some of that is to account for the wiring going all the way through. And hopefully we can cut that down. And then we're cutting down on the cockpit systems. Uh, imagine, I don't want to go all touch screen on it, but it'll be less, okay? Uh, so yeah, that is the idea. And as a result, this shuttle will be 5.5 tons less. And again, it changes the balance, so I have to test the balance. But the goal here is to get 31 tons to orbit instead of the shuttle's normal 25 tons. And that is what we are going to test here. So this is just a test tank. We're going to bring it into a decently high orbit. I think uh, about 430 kilometers circular or thereabouts will be good enough. And then bring it back down to the Cape is the goal. Um, I solicited suggestions from my uh, stream peoples, the viewers. Uh, as to 
what name I should give it. They gave a lot of a lot of funny names. I decided that uh, to limit it to existing ship names because that was part of the theme of the shuttle program. And they gave me Dauntless, and there have been Dauntlesses, uh, at least one in Pirates of Caribbean. But anyway, uh, I, I, I decided Dauntless was at least a decent name. There was uh, Constitution, Stalwart, Oblivious. I sort of like Oblivious and Adamant, um, but we've got Dauntless here. So this is the Shuttle Dauntless. It is a lighter shuttle. No other changes, right? Because, let's be realistic here, they're not going to replace the SRBs with liquid boosters in 2005-2006. Um, probably they're going to have to fix up the foam on the external tank, obviously, because of the foam hits, but uh, they're not going to make that lighter, that's for sure. And, yeah, who knows what else they might have done if they wanted to continue the shuttle program. But the idea is I just needed some more shuttles. And this is one modification I came up with. Let's see how it works. Okay, here we are with the launch. And I don't anticipate any problems with the launch because the fact that the shuttle itself is lighter is counterbalanced by the fact that we're carrying more cargo. So it basically ends up the same. So there shouldn't be any changes. I decided to do this as a voiceover because uh, during the time when I was recording the launch and re-entry, uh, there was some noise. So I didn't record my audio at that point. So I already know what happens. But anyway, uh, here we are, continuing on upward, and we're going to try to aim for a fairly high orbit. That won't be done entirely at the launch, but the uh, apoapsis after launch will be, I think, uh, 360 kilometers or so. So off go the boosters, and we are doing the rollover here. Making this shuttle variant, the Dauntless shuttle, was made possible by the way that texture switching happens on this particular shuttle. And the fact that the textures can actually have custom masses assigned to them, or mass adjustments. This is already used with the external tank. The super lightweight tank has a different mass than the lightweight or the normal tank, the original tank on STS-1. And I used that functionality for the shuttle so that I could just switch the texture to the one that I had made for the Dauntless. I just sort of erased the original name and put Dauntless in. And uh, with the texture switching on that, I could change the mass on the cockpit, the rear, and of course the engines have their own separate configuration anyway, so that's all right. But yeah, it made it fairly easy to make this variant. I didn't have to like copy everything and make an entirely new shuttle or anything. So here I am doing the burns to get it to the prescribed orbit, uh, above 430 kilometers circular-ish and at 28.6 degrees inclination for the full payload test. Of course, higher inclinations mean less payload. And so out it goes, and then we have to phase back with Cape Canaveral. I decided to do a two-day phasing, and we got that done properly. And then I brought it down to a more standard periapsis so that the script could take over from there. And so this is me doing that. And then I'll leave the rest of the re-entry to the re-entry script, which I made some adjustments to. But it'll be interesting to see how it handles the fact that the shuttle is lighter right now. It, because the shuttle is lighter, right, than the normal one. So it's going to get more lift. So whether the existing script can compensate for that. I didn't change the script specifically for the Dauntless shuttle. I just tweaked it a little bit based on what the other shuttles were doing in the Twitch uh, live streams. So here we are turning. This I really need to improve upon because it uses a lot of RCS for this turn. And it also tends to roll around a lot. I turn on caps lock to stop that. But it is frustrating. It uses a lot of delta V like that that we don't want to have it use. The script does do the S turns and adjusts its uh, trajectory based on where it's at. And so we can see some of that. And I decided to take off caps lock earlier than usual because it seemed to be having trouble with yaw right there. I turned it off. Um, I would just wasn't too happy with the way it was handling yaw. So I decided to free it because we seem to have enough delta V. And so I let it use it. And here we are over, well, almost over the Gulf of California there. Doing more turns to bleed off speed because, again, this has more lift. So it's going to have to do actually a lot more S-turns than usual. So it spent a lot of time sort of tilted like this. And here we are over the Gulf of Mexico. And there is the coast of Florida. 
We are north of Tampa Bay there. And everything seems to be looking good at this point. And indeed, it was fairly accurate overall, which is good. That means we can use the same re-entry script for both the regular shuttles and this one. That's sort of important. And ultimately, it uh, pitches down and then hands me control at 15 kilometers. So I'm just sort of waiting for that. That's for safety's sake. Even when it hands me control, it's a little bit twitchy. It's very prone to side slip. So yaw is very touchy. So in a nutshell, in reducing the mass of the parts, as I described, I did manage to keep the balance proper, and that allowed the re-entry to happen without any excessive use of RCS. A little bit more than I'd like, maybe some tweaking could be done, but you have to take into consideration the leverage, the lever arms of the different masses from the center of mass, and doing that, you can keep the center of mass in the same place, so it seems I did it well enough for now, though improvements could be made. The one thing though is I'm actually turning a little bit too quickly. I forgot at this point that this shuttle gets more lift because it's lighter. And so I should have waited a little bit longer before turning towards the runway. And as a result, I'm a little bit high and fast here and we'll need to bleed off speed. You can see me turning away from it to sort of get some of the speed off because we have too much energy coming in, I turned the way I would for the shuttle normally. And uh, given the fact that we were at the height and speeds that we were, but it is lighter, so I should have waited a little bit longer. And you'll see me doing some very inadvisable sort of things right around here too. The air brakes don't work, by the way. I tried them again during this, and they deploy, they visibly deploy, but they don't actually create any more drag. So that's why I have to do this. If we had the air brakes functional, I could actually get drag from them, and I wouldn't have to do those crazy maneuvers. Of course, doing all that right before the runway means that I was a little bit off. I didn't line up quite properly, and so it looks like I'm fighting some sort of crosswind or something. It's It was weird, but anyway, we got it down, and a little... A drag chute pops out, uh, those things that don't do anything deployed, and the Dauntless shuttle is on the runway at least. So some improvements can be made as far as how I brought that down. Anyway, there you have it, the first test of the Dauntless shuttle, the extra lightweight shuttle that I'll be using during my Twitch live streams on the Shuttle Saturday series. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.